What's up guys, this is Starblue, a gamer who loves those like games, looter games, and every game that involves build making. Do you have any idea how many possible builds there are in Elden Ring? Perhaps you've heard of the powerful Spring Space Fighter build or Intelligent Sorceress, but they are only a very small part of all builds. In this video, I'll show you many builds and how you can design your room build. Don't forget to like and subscribe, now let's dive right into it. I have given you two examples of builds, but you may have also heard of something like Bluffing's Arm build or Thrusting Shield Guard Counter build. Are they really the same build as they, well, don't feel similar? Personally, I call the latter two examples loadouts, while builds are a higher concept. A build consists of many gears, many weapons, spells, and talismans alike, concentrated by a certain attribute style. When facing a specific situation, you can make a loadout from the build. While a loadout has certain pros and cons, a build is possible to be versatile. In this video, I'll be focusing on the so-called builds instead of specific loadouts. So, what makes builds different from each other? I think it's how you invest your character attributes. In Elden Ring, there are 8 attributes. Three of them are basic stats such as HP, Mana, and Stamina, while the other five are all offensive attributes – Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcan. They can all contribute to your offensive abilities. Typically, a build chooses to mainly level up no more than two attributes, which locks this build out of many gears. There are only a few gears remaining accessible for this build. For example, a Strength Faith build cannot use arcane based weapons, whilst an Intelligent Sorcerer cannot wield heavy weapons with very high strength requirement. Hence, it's an interesting question to think of as how to fully exploit the gears that a build can use to overcome various challenges. Another question further emerges. What gears can count as accessible or suitable? Is a gear suitable for a build as long as its attribute requirement can be met? Well, I think there should be more discussion. Based on my experience, a build mainly utilizes four ways of combat. Regular weapons, sombering weapons, spells, and items. You cannot change the affinity of sombering weapons, so it's easy to judge if a sombering weapon is suitable for a build. Both of its requirement and scaling should synergize with this build's major investment. For spells, you only need to consider requirement as you can find many spell catalysts with special scaling. For example, there are glintstone staffs that scale with arcane and secret shields that scale with strength. So you don't really need to mind scaling. For items, things are just as simple. Most items don't have attribute requirement, but only scaling. So an item is suitable for a build as long as its scaling attribute synergizes with it. So far, I haven't talked about regular weapons yet, because they are indeed more complicated due to the fact that you can modify their affinity. Most regular weapons only require strength and dexterity attribute, and some of them have very, very low requirement. Thus, suitable for builds that don't embed the two attributes at all. With heavy, keen, and quality affinity, you can modify how a weapon leans towards strength and dex rather freely. With the other affinity, however, you can only modify a weapon's intelligent, phase, and arcane scaling while its strength and dex scaling is mostly fixed. Therefore, if you are playing a pure strength and dex build, you only need to pay attention to attribute requirement. But for other views, you should additionally care about the strength and death scaling with non-physical affinities. Now we are clear how to judge if a gear is suitable for a build. I shall next show you my own methodology for designing views. Typically, I first determine how to invest attributes. Sometimes it's because I want to play a certain sombering weapon, so I choose the corresponding build. Sometimes, well, I simply want to try a new build. 
Now that the major attributes of a build are clear, I can then find all the suitable summoning weapons, spells, and items. Yet I need to be more cautious with regular weapons. As we know, the upgradation materials in New Game Plus Zero are merely enough for two regular weapons, so I need to plan wisely. Besides attribute requirement and scaling, I usually also consider three additional factors. First of all, the two regular weapons should cover more ashes of war. A given type of weapon can only equate part of all ashes of war, so I tend to have two regular weapons of different types to gain more versatility. For instance, I can use one great sword that can equip Lion's Claw and one hover to use high speed. Second, make sure there's at least one way to deal high stance damage, be it flails or hammers of various sizes. If you don't have such ability from summoning weapons, remember to grab a regular weapon for stance damage. Furthermore, I also try to consider if I can use dual wielding jump attack with the build. Since you know it's unwise to use two regular weapons of the same type, dual wielding can make can only be made true with two summoning weapons, or a regular one and a summoning one. As a result, I tend to pay more attention to regular weapons with the same type as the summoning weapons in a build. With the steps above, I can now design a specific build that looks fun to play. In the end, let's see some typical builds. I will only show you some builds that mainly invest into two or one attribute. For other ways of investment, you can design views following the steps just now. The most typical do attribute view select one from strength and dex, and then one from intelligence, faith, and arcane. Let's call them strength x or dex x views. A fact, when you two-hand a weapon, your strength counts as 1.5 times of its original value. So, strength x views lean more towards two handing weapons that skill with both strength and X. In contrast, Dex X views are closer to pure X views, but by investing into dexterity, these views can access more diverse weapons compared to a real pure X build. The best demonstration for my claim is the comparison between strength intelligence and Dex intelligence views. Since many magic catalysts cap at 8 intelligence instead of 60, Dex intelligent views tend to level up intelligence until 80. This leaves very little room for dexterity, so in most time of a new game plus zero play, Dex intelligence views are virtually pure intelligence views. However, strength and intelligence view chooses to have 40 strength and 60 intelligence so that you can use regular weapons with cold affinity or some summoning weapons. Strength phase and dex phase views have a similar comparison, but since incantation catalysts cap at no more than 60 phase, dex phase views can invest more into dexterity than dex intelligence views. Similarly, dex arcane views are closer to pure status effect views of strength arcane views, we also use some heavy weapons with arcane affinity for high direct damage. If you want something more advanced, consider trying out views that don't invest into strength and dexterity at all. Intelligence faith views can access many unique spells such as death sorceries and golden aura incantations. With these unique spells, intelligence and faith is in fact a rather popular choice. Similarly, Faith Arcane Views can use unique Dragon Communion incantations. Intelligence Arcane Views have almost no unique spells, so they are less popular. I personally regard these views as a refined version of Intelligence Sorcerer Views. You know, sorcerers have trouble dealing non match damage, and thus it can be hard to fight enemies with high magic negation. However, Intelligence Arcane Views allow a sorcerer to use bleeding instead of magic to gain better versatility. You can also try out strength and dexterity views. Well, I don't recommend quality views, but both heavy and king views are good choices. Strength views can use both heavy and fire affinity, 
while dexterity views have access to both keen and lightning, so they are in fact quite versatile. With this video, I believe you may have found some new views that you didn't realize before. If you feel motivated, just give them a try. I'll also make some videos for a few views I like in the future. If you like my story or want to join me into depths of games, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you around.